Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode, one of my favorite companies. I've been doing business with Linode for eight years now. They're growing all over the world. They're opening data centers all over the place. Mine is in New Jersey. However, they're opening up in Canada, Australia, India, everywhere. Uh, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your app. Like I pay $20 a month. I've scaled it to 250,000 customers in a single month with just using about five to 10% of my available resources on a $20 a month account. So if you guys are looking to host something yourself, there's really no better company that I recommend than Linode. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. In this video, we're going to be talking about why you want to learn .NET Core. All right, guys. So the number one reason why you want to learn .NET Core is because that's where the jobs are. This is a um, .NET is, is developed by Microsoft. So it goes back to a long time ago. They have something called the Common Language Runtime, which allows for multiple languages like VB.NET, C Sharp, even Python. Things like Iron Python could compile down to the Common Language Runtime, which is .NET. Now, the problem with .NET in the past is that it only worked on Windows. So, like, you were restricted to Windows, which meant you were probably going to use IIS and then, like, SQL Server. And companies were able to successfully do that. In fact, a lot of Fortune 500 companies use .NET. If we look at the past of .NET, it really it boils down to Java. Java was created a long time ago, back in the late 90s, by a company called Sun Microsystems, which eventually got bought by a company called Oracle, which still owns Java to this day. But basically, guys, like a lot of people will say, you know, C Sharp is just like Java. Really, C Sharp is Java done right. Java had to go through a lot of learning hurdles and everything. It was dog slow when it first came out. It's gotten much better to this date. And obviously, it's used for Android. So long story short, though, C Sharp now runs on all platforms, Mac, Windows, and Linux. 3.0 just got announced. It just got released, which is really exciting. It's actually something that I want you guys to like, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to teach you guys how to learn C sharp and, and .NET, Cause seriously, this is something I want to like reinvigorate myself with. It's something I've removed myself from for the last couple of years. It's something that it, like the longer I spend in node and react and all this other shit, I just want to get back to .NET. And I'm not saying that that's the path for everybody, but what I will do is I will teach you guys what I know about .NET. And this is 10 years in the making of, dealing with .NET libraries. Not all of it converts over to .NET Core, not yet. But the greatest thing about .NET Core is that now that it's cross-platform, you can build websites with it. If you're dealing with Python, you don't have to deal with PyQt or anything like that. Um, C Sharp has all, everything you need for building software applications, games like Unity Engine. It can do websites. So it's not like we're dealing with just Node. Like Node is a great product, but Node is, it's restricted to web development. You're not going to build games in Node. You're not going to build like databases in Node, but you can in C Sharp. And maybe that's, that's not the perfect example, but one of the greatest things is that with .NET, like in C Sharp specifically, it applies to everything. So like you, like Node is, not, is restricted to web, but .NET, you can do anything. So say one day you're like, Hey, I don't want to be a web developer anymore. Well, I could still use .NET and I could build GUI application. I could build the next Photoshop and .NET. You're not going to do that with node. Another thing too, is look at Microsoft stock right now. They are a trillion dollar company. Apple was the first company to become a trillion dollar company. Microsoft is now $1.6 trillion in, in value. And it just keeps climbing. They just bought GitHub. They bought LinkedIn. The, the Visual Studio Code is one of the best text editors out there. And they're probably going to buy Stack Overflow or Stack Exchange Incorporated. That's just my guess. And guys, I understand the hate. I grew up with an 80s programmer. Like my dad was a C++ programmer. He was a big Perl programmer in the 90s, which is why I got into Perl when I first started programming. He used to call Microsoft micro shit. A lot of people used to, a lot of people still call it that. You can't really call it that. When you look at something like Facebook, like who are we going to trust? Like Microsoft, yeah, Bill Gates and and all his past or whatever. You know, honestly, I got more stake in Bill Gates and Microsoft even dating back to the 80s all the way through now than I do in Zuckerberg and Facebook. I'm sorry to say, like I trust the direction of Microsoft, especially under Satya Nadella, uh, compared to the previous CEO who was against open source. And honestly, there's probably some conversations to be had about 
hey, maybe open source isn't always the best opportunity for us developers. We're just giving our knowledge freely and getting nothing in return for it. So a lot of you guys are probably talking about learning curve or maybe thinking about learning curve and C sharp. And like, I'll admit, like when I was first getting started programming, I would, I had a book on C sharp at one point. It was like head first C sharp and just dealing with visual studio was such a nightmare for me, but visual studio actually does a ton. And now that visual studio code is out, everybody kind of recognizes, Hey, maybe Microsoft kind of knows what they're doing. Everybody's using visual studio code. And if you're not, then you, you're just, you're gone. You're like, you're not, you're not keeping up with the times. But even that aside, like my tutorials are going to touch on how to use Visual Studio Code and also Visual Studio, which by the way is now cross-platform as well. You can run Visual Studio on Mac. And that is something that is actually really awesome. C Sharp doesn't change every other day just for the sake of changing. I can write link code from years ago and it still works. Like in React, I have to rewrite my components every month. C sharp.net, yeah, there's a high learning curve there, but once you learn it, you don't have to keep relearning it every other fucking month. All right, so another reason, here is the Tiobi index for 2009. You can see C sharp is on the way up. And like, dude, I don't know why they're mentioning visual basic.net, but that is essentially the same thing. So if you combine these two, then you might as well put C sharp right next to Java. That's the honest to God truth. People that talk about Python, they're fucking newbies that don't know anything that they're talking about. Fortune 500s run Java and C sharp.net. That is the truth. Python's great for like a lot of different things, but it does not compare to Java or C sharp, especially when you're, you're talking about jobs. So if you're in data science and Python, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But for like Django jobs and all the other stuff, like you're better off with Java or C sharp still. So yeah, you guys can still call it micro shit if you want, but seriously, when I look at my career and I'm like, hey, like, what can I learn and spend my blood, sweat, and tears on? And what is going to return the favor? Damn, I can't think of anything better than Microsoft and C Sharp with Blazor, with .NET Core, with Visual Studio Code. I can't think of anything better right now.